Hi, this is part two of the reply of Terry Parker to the Crown submissions on why the Svetkopoulos case means that the law against uh, marijuana, the prohibition, has been invalid for the past six years, like it used to be invalid for the two years before when we made them drop the charges against 4,000 people. Part two. And Crown, paragraph four. The federal court itself has since recognized that the decision in Svetkopoulos does not invalidate the prohibition against possession of marijuana. In the case of Edwin Pearson and others, uh, Prothonori Alto explained the situation as follows. Nothing in the Svetkopoulos decision suggests that Section 4 of the CVSA is of no force in effect, the prohibition. And we go up, Helen agrees, court clutch Professor Alan Young did not ask. Pegna. Uh, 17. In sum, while the earlier medical marijuana jurisprudence, Parker, did challenge the constitutional validity of Section 4 of the CDSA, the cases have shifted in their focus to the operation of the medical marijuana supply regime codified under the MMAR. And we answer, none of the Alan Young-inspired cases challenged the CDSA prohibition. All challenge shorts found in the MMAR exemption without making the JP link to short out the CDSA prohibition for us. Only Termel engineered jurisprudence has ever challenged the constitutional validity of the CDSA prohibition, which shorts found in the MMAR exemption, as in the case herein. 21. And while they say, the Crown, and while the skirmishes concerning the MMAR are ongoing, none of the jurisprudence concerning the MMAR has attacked the underlying validity of Section 4 of the CDSA, the prohibition. And I say, yes, Professor Alan Young did not ask. We agree. Pegna. Doesn't mean we can't. And in paragraph 5, the Crown says, Prothonotary Alto's decision was subsequently upheld by Justice Hughes. And we go, we agree with the Alto and Hughes rulings that Pegna Professor Alan Young did not ask. Doesn't mean it's not there, right? So, R versus Long. Crown, paragraph 6. The question of whether the decision in Svetkopoulos invalidates Section 4.1 of the CDSA was recently addressed by Justice Frank in R versus Long. And we say, well, this is not true. Frank J. specifically refused to address the non-related Svetkopoulos ruling, stating at this website, quote, paragraph 45, this appeal, long, proceeds on different grounds and must be determined exclusively on the basis of the factual record before the court in this appeal. Paragraph 46, unlike Svetkopoulos, this appeal involves a review of the constitutionality of the entire regulatory scheme, and the question of whether a policy must be embodied in law for the regulations to be constitutionally valid. Strayer DJ and Svetkopoulos refused to consider the trial decision in the case at hand long, stating that the issue of whether the policy in issue should be embodied in law was not relevant to his finding of whether it worked or not. Consistent with that, the Federal Court of Appeal did not address the issue in long. 47. Both the facts and the issues in Svetkopoulos are distinguishable from this case, and it is therefore of no assistance to Mr. Long in the determination of the issue on this appeal. So now, appellant agrees with both Justice Strayer and Justice Frank that whether the MMAR must be embodied in policy or in law is very different, distinguishable, and irrelevant to whether the MMAR has malfunctions. The Crown has once again misinformed the court by suggesting, quote, the question of whether the decision in Svetkopoulos invalidates Section 4 of the CDSA prohibition was recently addressed by Justice Frank in Long. An appellant submits that it is contemptuous to suggest Justice Frank ruled on something irrelevant when she evidently did not. 28. They go, Justice Frank concluded that Section 4.1 is not invalidated by the decision in Svetkopoulos, 
And though we agree that Pavna, Professor Alan Young, did not ask that Section 4 be invalidated by Spectropoulos, Justice Frank concluded that Section 4 is not invalidated by the Borenstein technical decision in law. So the entire scheme wasn't wrong, but it's full of malfunction. Okay. So continuing, appellant cites at least seven times Justice Frank notes the link between the CDSA invalidity of the prohibition whenever there's a flaw in the MMAR exemption. Out one, that exemption has given rise to challenges regarding the constitutionality of Section 4.1 prohibition. Paragraph 3. Whether the scheme in place does not provide a constitutionally acceptable medical exemption to the criminal prohibition. 6. Oh, constitutionality is dependent on two conditions being met. met sorry. 6. Uh, section 4 violated Section 7 of the Charter as there was no constitutionally acceptable medical exemption. And paragraph 7. The regulations were found to be inadequate, meaning the law was dead. And 17, whether the government had responded to the inadequacies identified in Hitzig in a constitutionally acceptable manner, whether the Section 4 prohibition is in breach of Section 7 of the Charter. And finally, 39, those circumstances, MMAR flaws, that resulted in Section 4 of the CDSA being found unconstitutional have been remedied. So the link is always there over and over. Now, R versus Polzer, Crown, paragraph 8. The same conclusion that Pedna didn't ask, Svetkopoulos didn't say Section 4 is gone, was reached by the Supreme Court of B.C. in Ryan Polzer versus Regina, and I put the website. 32. Justice Roundwaith ruled at, uh, and I put the, junk, the website, quote, Issues. Should there be a stay of proceedings on the grounds that Section 4 of the CDSA is invalid because the MMAR regs violate the Charter? Perfect. 17. With these provisions struck, the MMAR regulations and the prohibition under Section 4 were declared valid. So there's the link again, right? Once it's fixed, hey, prohibition's on again. 17. In December 2003, the federal government reenacted two of the three supply-limiting regulations struck down by the Ontario Court of Appeal in Hitzig. And now both have been found bad again, right? 2. 20. The Crown cites Cubby as conclusive of the constitutionality of the MMAR regulation. So no matter how many flaws were found by anybody else, this Cubby case says that the judge found none, which means there are none according to the Cubby case, because their judge found none. This is law, right? The court held that the applicant lacked the necessary factual basis for her application. So the Cubby case is based on no evidence, and the judge could say, well, you didn't present any evidence, so I didn't see it. That's the new precedent they're relying on of the Cubby case. 24, it is true that the judgment did not refer to the fact that two provisions of the MMAR were reenacted verbatim after being struck in Hitzig, so the Cubby decision that it was working fine was even before the other two decisions were made. <laughs> and they're still saying we're holding by the old decision because we don't believe in the two new ones. So, uh, a fact that is central to the cases in our versus Long and Svetkopoulos. Long bad, Svetkopoulos good. Um, cited by the appellant. However, the BC Court of Appeal Approved the BC Supreme Court judgment in Cubby, found the MMAR regulations valid because no one's found a flaw yet. 33. Actually, the MMAR flaws in Section 41B1 and Section 54.1 were not central to Long, only whether it was enacted in policy or not. This is the no evidence of flaw is evidence of no flaw theory in law. Think about that. We see no evidence of flaw, which means there is evidence of no flaw for other cases. And Cubby is another Alan Young associated loser proceeding. Think about that. Always the losers that bother us are coming out of the Alan Young camp all the time. 34. Okay, the judge continues. If I were wrong in round weight, by the way, in concluding that Cubby decides the matter, I would nevertheless decline to apply the reasoning in Long and Svetkopoulos for the following reasons. In Svetkopoulos, 
The judge dismissed, oh, wait a minute. The federal court deputy judge dismissed Long because he considered the question irrelevant. I also consider the remedy in Long to be problematic. So we know Long's no good. I find the decision of the federal court of Canada in Svetkopoulos no more helpful than Long, which we knew was no good. In Svetkopoulos, a deputy judge declared section 41 of the MMAR, the reenacted one-to-one producer to ratio, to be unconstitutional and invalid. 